Hey, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another tutorial from the XNA networking series. And in this tutorial, well, it's not really going to be a tutorial, I'm going to release the source code to you guys, and I'll just go over the coding a little bit. It's very well commented, so I don't think you have any issues. But I just want to do a brief explanation on what's going on here. Okay, so at the very beginning, we, this is just a single console application. It's not related to XNA at all. It's just standard C Sharp and .NET. So what we're going to do is we want to display some information to the user, uh, what the current settings are, and tell them to stop the server, change the config file or whatever if the settings are wrong, and start the server back up. So once we write down that information, we need to try to create a new server. Now that server is a single object that uh, the class I created for this project. And we use the port that we specify in the config file. And now it's an asynchronous. It's threaded. So this thread needs to uh, just loop infinitely and to save up some CPU time uh, I thread sleep for one second this could probably be maximum uh, but I like to keep it for one second without this my CPU usage and I have a pretty high-end computer it's about 10 percent without the thread sleep with the thre with the thread that sleep it's down to 1%, so it saves it a pretty significant amount of CPU usage. If there's any errors while creating the server, it will catch that error. And I'll mention this is one in one of the podcasts where I talk about the quick tips. I'll mention the try, catch, and finally. All right, so the settings file. The settings file is built into the Solution Explorer. It's a pretty nifty thing to do. If you don't have this, you just go to re you, if you want to do this for your own project, I it can probably work with XNA projects. You just right click the project name, not the solution, but the project, and go to properties. And then you'll have a settings here. And if you do not have a settings file, it'll just have a single it looks like a link. It says this project doesn't have a settings file. Would you like to create one? So you just click that link and then you'll have a settings file like you see here, uh, but without all the entries. And you just name it whatever, the, set the type, set the scope, and set the initial value. All right, so that's how you basically do the settings file and it'll automatically output the config file. If I browse to the uh, repositories, Samples, I believe I put it up there. Relay server. There it is. All right. Bin, debug, or release. It creates this config file. And if we open this config file with Visual Studio, you can see the actual settings. So if that way I can release this program for everybody, and if they find out. I want to use a different port. They could just open this up in Notepad and say I want to use port 1491 instead of 1490. Or I want to change read buffer size. I'm going to be sending a lot more massive messages. So maybe I'll double this or something like that. Maximum number of clients. I want my game to support 10 players. So I'll increase that to 10. Now, I have not tested with 10 players, but I'm sure it'll work fine. Mostly because testing it on the same machine does not get all the issues that might uh, come up when you're testing up multiple machines. And I do not have 10 computers to test it with. But I do test it on two players. I have two different computers, so I can test it with two, and it does work fine there. Now, this is a byte protocol enabled server, which means that if you have a byte protocol that your game uses we'll explain this in later on in the series when we actually build a game but the byte protocol specifies 
the first byte that the message is sent identifies what type of message it is. So for example, the byte protocol here is, if a new player joined, the byte protocol is one. So when our game, if we receive a message and we look at the first byte and we see, is it one? Now we know that a new player has joined the game. Let's add a new player to our list of players. If it's two, I'm sorry, if it's zero, we know that it's disconnected so we can remove that player from the game itself. Uh, just a byte protocol enabled server allows us to identify what type of message it is. So that's basically it. The main functionality of the server is about 90% of it is done with the TCP client and TCP listener, which is built into the system.net and system.net at sockets. And that's pretty much all the functionality. And it's pretty complex to get to understand everything, so I'm not going to discuss it all in great detail. If you want to look at it, you're welcome to look at the source code. It's pretty well commented. I will mention, because you might want to do something else for your server, uh, but for depending on the settings, the settings file that I mentioned earlier, uh, it's right here. I do have a settings that, uh, where is it? Okay, this one is it. Enable sending IP and ID with every message. So if that is true and it's set by default, if that is true, let's go back to the server file. If send message to clients when a user is removed, that's not it. Let me go ahead and pause the video and I'll find it. All right, so here it is. So with that, if that's true, we need to combine the data and we need to write the player's ID and the IP and we need to combine the data with the original data that the source client sent and then append that client's ID and IP and then send it to everybody else. So the way that we do that is to, we have two arrays. We have the original data array that we want to keep. We do not want to modify that array. And we have a memory stream that we passed in. Now we need to create another byte array called result, and that will be the combination of the data and the ID and IP address of the client, what we want to append. Now we need to create the another new one that will combine both the data. Actually, the results from the memory stream, which is the IP and ID, and the combined data is from the combination of both. As you see the length here, it's the addition of both the original data and the IP and ID. And we just loop through those and until it's all combined. Then we return the combined data and we're ready to go. So this code will be available for you to look at. I have changed a few things, updated it a little bit. It's a pretty nifty thing. Uh, getting it to work with the settings file was interesting. I, no, this was my first time using the settings file and functionality. Uh, the TCP listener, that's what listens for new clients. So that's all the listener is for. 90% of this functionality is built into the system.net.sockets. The other 10% is uh, the actual sending the events, like a new connection or data received, and holding the user ID, and all that customized things that I had to create. All right, so that's pretty much it for this relay server. Uh, next tutorial, probably tomorrow, will be the actual starting of the game. And we'll just build a simple game. It'll probably be about 20 minutes. And I'm only going to... Uh, this is going to be a series, so I'm not going to have a full complete game by the end of the tutorial. It's going to be like part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4, part 5. 
So by the end of part one, we might have it be able to uh, receive data and just set it up to where it can receive data. Then part two will probably be uh, determining if a new player joined and actually add that guy or ship or something on the screen. Part three will actually be able to communicate movements. Uh, part four will actually be able to communicate attacking like a spaceship attacking another spaceship. Uh, part four, did I say part four? Uh, the next part will discuss what happens when you destroy the other ship and just stuff like that will slowly build up I don't want to throw you a uh, two hour video and just get everything done right then and there I like to keep things small short and sweet and break it up into multiple parts alright so that's it for this video next video we will just start the game and we'll go from there hope to see you next time